Inside, there are no beds and you get no mattresses. There's no running water. The rooms are really, really dirty. In a cell that's meant for four, they would put an average eight people inside. If you're unlucky, it can come up to like 12. As an average 24 year old, go to work, come back, hang out with my friends, and I was just figuring out what I wanted to do and getting better at it. And um, it felt surreal when I was sent away because I didn't think that I would literally be sent away with the possibility of never ever coming home. I think I just graduated, um, sort of freshly graduated. In my 20s, I think I was more active, did more outdoorsy stuff that sort of followed up from after school. I was pretty active sports-wise in school as well. And what did you do for fun? I smoked up. I consumed marijuana. Um, and that was it. That was my vice. Um, how I felt at the moment when it was happening was slightly scared but at the same time I didn't think it was an, a serious offence so I felt like okay I'll just go to the police station but I'll be going home tomorrow or tonight and when the judge said that my case will be postponed for a month and I am to go to Kajang while waiting trial, that's when it hit me, that it's serious. There was no running water, the rooms are really, really dirty. Um, when I first arrived, I didn't have a cup, so I didn't drink any water for the first three days until someone realised I didn't have a cup and gave me one. My mom passed um, a few years before I was incarcerated. Being the elder sibling, I was looking out and looking after my baby sister, who was in standard one. She suffered as well because I wasn't there for her when she needed me. I just don't think that it's fair that she had to spend her Saturday mornings visiting me in prison. About 63% of persons in prison are those convicted of minor drug consumption offences. They could stem just from recreational use, experimenting particularly within the youth, up to the extent of having a substance use disorder that requires treatment. And therefore we are advocating that this whole category of persons are diverted towards healthcare and out of the criminal justice system. From my experience, it's very unfortunate that you have a large uh, group of youth. For this category, I feel that education is absolute priority. Now, if somebody is experimenting, a young man or woman who has experimented at a party or something like that, for the very first time, you imagine, and you send him into prison, because that's what the law dictates at the moment, You've essentially ruined his future. He or she will have a prison record. The stigma that comes with it when you are released, you come out into a society that may ostracize you. You'd be lucky if your family still supports you. Employment opportunities are close to nil. Nobody wants to employ someone with a criminal record. So where do these people go? Back into crime. We need to step away from our traditional mindset of incarceration, because that's not producing the answers that we need. The most unfortunate thing that I came across in prison was an old schoolmate from primary school. She was a prefect in school. She did really well, straight A's, um, sports, pretty much all-rounder. And to see her in prison was a surprise. So what I found out was she got caught smoking in high school with her parents. Their first reaction or, uh, was to send her to Henry Gurney. And I'd say that was the first mistake her parents did. So what happened to her in Henry Gurney is she picked up bad habits, made the wrong friends, and then from a cigarette, it went straight to hard drugs. 
and because her parents didn't understand what she was going through, they just wrote her off as incorrigible. But I felt that it was the system that turned her into a drug addict. We need to address the problem, uh, whether it's addiction or whether it's a lack of education, uh, that is causing us to have a 63% in prison who relate only to minor drug consumption offences. Um, that is the policy that needs to change. But I'm not saying that we shouldn't address the problem and we should just let them go. I'm not saying that. Uh, and I do believe that a nation must have a certain element of discipline. Um, but they need to have administrative sanctions, which will include education, community service and treatment if necessary. So now I'm working as a producer and currently shooting a drama series. I'm very grateful that I have that job and I know not everyone um, can bounce back and even be employed after what had happened. And I'm just so fortunate that I was re-employed by my former boss who accepts me, who doesn't think it's taboo that I've been to prison. Not everyone who has been in, who has come out, bounces back to where they were or, or can even reach that first step of like getting any job. Um, it's hard because the public always views them as someone dangerous and someone that they need to stay away from. I often do think back um, about the friends that are still inside or the friends I've met and have left. Sometimes I get upset over it and I get angry that two years of my life was wasted. It's just, I don't know how to really verbalize it, but it's this real hard, dark feeling inside. It's a law that put me away. They have wronged me.